Hello and welcome to week seven. So far in our study of tonal harmony, we've focused almost exclusively on diatonic pitches or notes that belong within whichever key we're working in. We've used diatonic pitches to create triads and seventh chords, uh, and then to organize those chords in ways that seem logical or what we've called functional, right? Um, we've also used primarily diatonic pitches to explore non-chord tones and how they can help enhance or embellish those harmonic motions. Well, beginning with this unit, we're gonna to start to broaden our horizons to include non-diatonic pitches, or, or, or what we're going to call chromaticism. Now, it's important to recognize that at this point in time, when we talk about chromaticism, we're still talking about uh, motions and, 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 and uh, techniques that exist within an overall tonal framework. And that's important because uh, in more advanced theory study, you're going to start to study this idea of chromaticism uh, in ways where composers uh, and, and we can start to use um, chromatic motions to really kind of gradually stretch at the boundaries of tonality and, and really culminate among some composers starting in the early 20th century where they start to do away with this idea of tonality or tonal center altogether. And that's where you get things like 12-tone music, pitch class set theory, um, and, and other techniques where chromaticism really has been expanded to, uh, to, to again, just kind of de-emphasize this idea of tonality or tonal center. Uh, that said, for now, we're going to limit our use of, of the term chromaticism to include treatments that still exist kind of within this tonal world. So we'll start that discussion this week um, by exploring secondary dominance. So secondary Secondary dominance can help emphasize the arrival of most diatonic chords. And I say most because really secondary dominance, uh, we can use those to lead into major triads or minor triads or into seventh chords um, where major and minor triads, major or minor triads are, the, are kind of the underlying thing, right? Um, secondary dominance don't really lead all that well into diminished triads. And that really harkens back to, you know, if you think back to your very first exploration of triads, we realize that diminished triads are framed by that diminished fifth right, that tritone, uh, rather than by the more stable perfect fifth that is framing the major triads or the minor triads. And so because of that instability in diminished triads like a diminished seven chord and in minor keys uh, like a diminished two chord as well, um, those really aren't great candidates for arrivals by secondary dominant. So uh, in, in the upcoming video material, you're going to see us start to explore this idea of secondary dominance as they lead to, again, those major triads, those minor triads, or the seventh chords with an underlying triad of major or minor. Enjoy.